Ah, where are they? Where are they? Oh, those wise men should have been back by now. It's only five and a half miles to Bethlehem, straight south from here. They promised me they'd come back. They promised me they'd go find out where this king baby is located. You know the king baby? The one that's trying to take over my throne? Nobody takes a throne from King Herod. And then they promised they'd tell me who he was, where he was living. And then I could go and worship him with my sword. Ha ha ha. Ah, they haven't come back yet. Good thing I sent my trusted captain and some men out to spy on them. They should be back any minute now. Oh, there you are. Yes, what do you have to report? I've learned from my scouts that the travelers from the east, they have returned to, well, the east. What? All of them? All of them? Are you kidding me? How many of them are there anyway? Did we finally figure that out? Yes, Your Majesty. There are definitely three of them, but possibly more and maybe less. We probably should have clarified that. I'm so sorry. What? Well, this is so confusing. All right, all right. Enough of this foolery. From now on, we refer to them as three wise men. I don't care how many there really were. All right. All three of them dared to disobey me, and they deserve swift punishment. Y yes, my lord. Shall I immediately start writing a very mean letter to them? A letter? What are you talking about? Pen is mightier than the sword. Had it with your foolish soldier jokes, Captain. No, what you're going to do is you're going to mount the horses, take your men, follow the road to the east, capture the wise men. Just a second. All right. Get a hold of yourself there, Herod. The wise men aren't really the target. It's King Baby. Yes, King Baby. Just, just living there peacefully, happily in Bethlehem for probably about a year or so over now. Ah, just getting things and getting those nice gifts that those wise men brought for him. Ah, getting the worship that the wise men gave him. It all belongs to me. Ah, all right, Captain. Yes, Majesty. My keen mind has deduced exactly what you should do. Are you ready for some precise, specific instructions? Absolutely, Your Majesty. All right. Go ahead. What you're gonna do? Is you're gonna take a whole bunch of men, a bunch, and then you're gonna mount them, some some animals, and and you're gonna. Uh, 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 ride or, 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 or go quickly uh, on down to the general area of Bethlehem. General area. And then kill. Kill. Kill who, Your Majesty? Well, the children, of course. But, Your Majesty, which one? Well, no, no, not just one. You're going to kill all the children. Ha <laughs> ha. That's right, because somewhere there in the Bethlehem area, one of those children is King Baby. And so as long as we kill them all, your Majesty, you did say that this King Baby, he's a boy? Yes, technically yes, what's your point? Well, well then, wouldn't that mean that, that we would only need to kill the boys and not all the little girls? Yes, technically. Ah, oh, and, and one last thing, Your Majesty. Didn't you say that the baby had been born sometime within the last year? That's what the wise men seem to insinuate, yes. Well, in that case... Wouldn't it make more sense if we killed just the little boys that were under two years old? Nah, it's a stickler for regulations, Captain. All right. All right, fine, have it your way. Go and kill all the boy babies that are two years and under. Yes, Your Majesty. Don't fail me, Captain. I will. Oh, sorry. Why Oh, I said, Kimmy, 
to Jerusalem. I just need to get there and tell King Herod that... Is that a Roman soldier over there? Not so fast, Satan. What? Oh, who are you? Oh, are you another angel? Oh, this whole area of Bethlehem is crawling with angels. What are you doing here? We are here to protect the baby Messiah from you, Satan. The baby Messiah? Oh, is that who that is? Oh, and right over there is a Roman soldier trying to find the baby Messiah. Hmm. Hmm. So if I was to just go over there and give him a little poke, he would then have to come over and, oh, I don't know, chop the baby's head right off. Oh, it's a perfect solution to my plan. Oh, soldier boy. Uh, uh, what are you... I can't just let you do that. God is still protecting this little baby. Yes, I am. Jesus, I would have had you too if it wasn't for the ouch, if it wasn't for those meddling angels. I'd be looking out for you. Uh. Oh my, I did hear someone out there identify yourself immediately. Oh, just a Oh, oh wow. This, this dark night has got darker. Alright, I'll tell you what. I'll say Marcus, you say Polonius. Ready? Marcus! Now it's your turn. Marcus! Marcus? start thinking, oh, it's just so nice and simple. He came down, it was just quiet in a manger, there were angels singing, there were shepherds worshiping, wise men traveling, and all those things did happen, right? Me, me. But also, it was a dangerous place where Jesus was. Did you guys ever stop and think that when Jesus came down here from heaven to be born as a baby, he came to the only place in the universe where there is sin? That's dangerous. He came to the only place where there's sinful people, where there's evil angels, where Satan was hanging around. But he came down here anyhow because he loved us so much. And when he came down here, was he coming down here to just walk around like a big, tough ruler all the time? Nobody could hurt him? Nobody could do anything to him? No. He had to be protected by angels. When he was a little child, angels had to be watching over and protecting him because he couldn't defend himself. But you know, eventually, as Jesus grew up, and he learned about God for himself, and he learned about God's promises for himself, he didn't have the angels protecting him at every single moment. He was turning, he would eventually grow up to go out and deal with Satan, and to use God's word like a sword in his belt, and like a light in his pathway, to teach him exactly what to do. You know, God's word can be like that for you guys too. Right now when you're little, you might feel like, you know what, I don't have to worry too much. My parents will watch out for me. I don't have to worry about really learning anything about God or anything because my parents take me to church. That's all I need to do. But you know what? As you go to church and as you start reading and learning the Bible on your own, you're going to learn it for yourself so that you can use God's Word to also overcome Satan. Because God's Word is powerful and has all the promises and power that we need to overcome Satan and his evil tricks. All right, let's say a quick prayer and then we're going to go on to the rest of our lesson time. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you have given us the wonderful gift of Jesus, not just Jesus himself coming down here and all that he did for us, but also the story of what Jesus went through, that we can read about it and learn from it and apply it to our lives so we can see also how you want us to live by having faith in you, by studying the Bible, by letting you teach us about yourself. We want to be able to be your partners in all of this, Jesus. God, help us out. Help us to listen and to learn. We love you. Amen.